Jesus laid hands on the sick, Peter dead shadow, Paul dead handkerchief. That's witnessing. Witnessing. Evolving glory. Excelling glory. Supernatural dimension from one propensity to another. That's who you are. You didn't come now by mistake. The reason you came now is so that you can manifest a dimension that has never been seen. We come according to degrees of intensity. And you are not just a witness. You are also an ambassador. Not knowing what Christ has made us is one of the major hindrance of believers walking in dominion. In this video, Apostle Michael enlightened us on three things scripture said the Lord has made us. He said for every man to discover himself he must first of all discover God through the Rima word of God. You are not a mistake or weak. There is a definite purpose God has sent you to discover. Discover your true identity in Christ as you watch this video to an end. Let me show you three things that the Bible says we are. Number one, 1 John 3 from verse 1 to 2. If you know who you are, there are things that will happen with and through you naturally. And all of those natural things will be supernatural. He said, Behold, what manner of love the Father had bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. That we should be called the sons of God. He said, Therefore the world knoweth us not. That's what I'm telling you. We, we are here, but we are not from here. He said, We are called the sons. Imagine what this apostle is calling himself. So when this apostle shows up and you say, Who is your father? I say, God. And you are like, wait, I don't mean, I mean, who is your father? I say, I'm God, God is my father. And you are like, Augusta, you are a Galilean. Who is your father? I say, God. Because he said, we are called the sons of God. This is not denying your earthly father. Honor him. But your reality must transcend that realm. Now are we, look at verse 2. He said, beloved. In verse 1, he said, we were called. Now he has entered a cause himself. So it's not people calling him anymore. He said, now are we the sons of god now are we are we now are we the sons of god that's how this man saw himself which son of god is he? which son of god is poor which son of god can be demonized you know who son is a son is not just he gave back to me in scriptures there are definition of sonship number one a son is one who mirrors the father hebrews chapter one from verse 1 to 3, God was sundry times and in diverse manner, spake in time past unto the fathers by the, on the, by, by the prophet, as in this last day spoken to us by what? His son. Who is the son? Who being the brightness of his glory. So when this guy say, now are we the sons of God, what he's telling you is that anywhere we come, don't look for God. God has come. That means we mirror God. We image God. We reveal God. So for this kind of person, if he doesn't come to a place again and start saying, God, show yourself. I have come God has shown himself how can this kind of person walk in weakness there is a power that will flow naturally from this consciousness when it comes you say you are looking for God you say what do you need everything God wants to give is here and the full package of his manifestation because what now are we and who are the sons of God and who are the sons they are those who image the father but look at you you are in a place everybody is confused you are saying Lord when will you show yourself because you don't know that now are you the son of God. And even if you say now are you the son of God, you don't know the meaning of son. Number two, who is the son? Romans 8, 14. As many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. That means this guy has no problem having God lead him. So for him, the leading of the Holy Ghost is natural to him. If he wants to go out, he says, Lord, what will you have me do? And God will speak because he knows that he must be led to be a son. That means if this guy wants to enter a business, he said, God, which one should I do? That's why certain men have certain levels of precision. Because if I'm the son of God, I am led by the spirit. So I will no longer be hoping that I will hear God. I hear God because God speaks to his sons. And I am a son. So for me, the voice of God is no longer a gift. It's an inheritance because I'm a son. I don't beg my father to gift me with talking with me. It's even my father's obligation to speak with me. And I don't have to become very mature to hear my father. In fact, I hear him more when I was a child. How many of you saw visions more the week you gave your heart to Christ? Because that time, you need a lot of direction. Casualty will be much. And all of that is because now are we the sons of God. That's not all. Number three, sons of God are those who rule God's estate. 
He said, Galatians 4 1, the air, so long as it's dying, it's not different from a salmon. So God places him under tutors and governors. Why? Because you must mature for the things of the kingdom to be given to you. So if this guy is saying, I'm a son, he's telling you that anywhere I come, I'm responsible for God's agenda. So he can enter a city. They say, Oh, this city, there's fornication. They say, What? In the name of Jesus, I address the prince of immorality. And you are wondering, he doesn't need to come for apostolic invasion. He's a supervisor of God's agenda. He's a carrier of God's agenda. Did you not read about Paul? Paul entered the city. The Bible said he saw religious activity was everywhere, but they didn't know God. He said he was stirred in the spirit. And immediately, he entered the synagogue and said, Listen, I want to talk to you about the unknown God. He knew God's agenda rested on his shoulder. So such men, anywhere they went to, they carried God. They carried this agenda. He said, Philip went to Samaria. He wasn't sent on mission. It was persecution that drove them. Acts chapter 8. But the moment he came to Samaria, it became apostolic invasion. He said he preached Christ there. The whole city was full of joy. Because he knows he is the mobile expression of God's agenda. But you see, you think that you must belong to a fellowship first to carry out God's agenda. You think a church must recognize you in a stadium before you carry out God's agenda. So even street evangelism you can't do. Because you don't know that if you don't move, God will move. Somebody asked Andrew Wama, when will revival come? He said, when I move, that's revival. That's the revelation. When I move, God moves. And if God moves, that's revival. So you ask him, when will God do it? He said, wait, I'm coming. Most of you read about the late Archbishop Benson in Dahosa and he stirred your spirit, but you didn't know the foundation of the revelation. Best in the house, I say, if God does not move, I'll move God. Why is he saying so? Because God is inside him. If he moves, God moves. The day God decides to put himself inside you, God subjected himself to move when you move. But you will not know that if you don't know that you are the mobile expression of God's agenda. You go to the market, you think God is in church on Sunday morning. You go to the school, you think God is in church on Sunday morning. But those who know they carry God's agenda, when they enter the market, revival comes there. Healing can take place in the market. You don't need a healing service for revival. Those who know they are the mobile agenda of God, when they enter the school, revival comes there. I was teaching in the school, sir. Mount St. Gabriel Secondary School. Some of my students have graduated from the university now. They will they hear me. So this is a public knowledge. Sir, during break, nobody goes to eat. I enter one class and I start talking to them about the lost prayer. Sometimes I begin, our Father who art in heaven. Before you know what's happening, the whole hall is jammed. Students are hanging on window. I don't need an evangelist to come there for revival to happen. I went there, they thought they employed the teacher. I came as a carrier of God. I came. But see, you don't need an angel to appear to you on a mountain. You need an identity. How come you are in the bank? And for 10 years, nothing has happened there. You don't know that now are we the sons of God. The day you know, the 10 minutes of break, you say, sir, can, can I tell you something? And then you come, you say, God loves you. And you hug the person. And they start screaming, revival has started. You don't need to lay hands on the person religiously. God loves you, sir. And power hit the person. Tomorrow they'll say, what did you do? You say, no, God flows out of me. There is a type of pastoring that requires being ordained in the church. There's another pastoring that comes from heaven. <laughs> Where people see you as covering, they submit to your authority. You will notice, even the ones of the other religion will come and say, Pastor, my son could not sleep yesterday. And he will say, go home, he will sleep today. He will say, won't you do anything? You say, no, when I spoke, God spoke. You know what the Bible says? When they hear you, they hear me. When they hear you, they hear me. How many? Jesus, they said, the wine is out. He said, it's not yet my time. The woman said, whatever he says to do, do. And Jesus said, fill the water jars with water. They filled it. No prayer. Faith, take to the governor of the feast. I know what I want. Because I know it, it was happening. That's how God works. And if you know that now, are you the sons of God? You will operate this manifestation. Hear me. Anywhere you go, revival has come. Do you know why we call it Kalaba Apostolic Invasion? We are seeing beyond the auditorium. We are addressing the city. Why do you think we think that way? Because now are we the sons of God. When we enter a place, the city responds to us. Can I tell you something? All the princes in this land know I came. I'm telling you. This is not a statement of pride. All the principalities in this territory, they know I came. And there will be shift in this land because I came. Because we didn't come as preachers. We came as government agents. 
bringing the dominion of Zion. Now are we the sons of God. We are the sons of God. That's why no power can limit us. Somebody looked at me and said, Kai, the place where you came from, people hardly succeed. I said, not me. You don't know where I came from. He said, ah, I saw your name in Soropa. Are you not a doma? I said, that's where I passed through. <laughs> I came from heaven. I'm an errant. Did you not see the way John introduced him? There was a man sent from God whose name was John. There was a man, I'm sent from God. I'm a letter from heaven. And it's not just me, including you. But the question is, are you aware? Now are we the sons of God? And listen, this is not wishful thinking. The Bible said to them that believe, to them he gave what? The power to become the sons of God. Do you believe that Jesus is the son of God? Do you believe that Jesus died for you? Do you believe that he rose from the dead? Immediately you become God's identity to your generation. Immediately you become the expression of God's power to your generation. Immediately you become the hope of your generation. Now are we the sons of God. We pride ourselves too much with mundane things. Somebody wears a wrist watch and his old pride anchors on that watch. Meanwhile the lifespan of that watch even from the manufacturer is two years. Somebody drives a car and his whole identity is in that car. Meanwhile the lifespan of that car is six years. And the manufacturer knows. Some who were driving V-boot 10-12 years ago, they don't even know where the car is. They parked it in the mechanic village and left it. But once upon a time, that was the anchor of their pride. That means now that the pride has gone, they are finished. But you see, for some of us who believe in eternal things, we move from glory to glory, from realms to realms, from power to power. Because being the son of God, we never expire. Even the angels are called sons of God. That means for all eternity, I am son of God. He said they that believe, he gave the right to become the sons of God. And Jesus said, these signs shall follow them that believe. So signs and wonders are byproducts. When I move, signs happen. When I move, wonders happen. Because it's the byproduct. That's how you know they that believe. He didn't say go and say I'm a believer. Signs and wonders will introduce you. Because that's what reveals songs. I don't struggle with signs and wonders. I don't. There was a time in my life I saw some men lifting crutches. Everywhere they go, they lift crutches. I said, come on, man. I, I want to lift crutches too. I can't come for meeting and I just talk to people. I'm not a, I'm not a lecturer. Not a lecturer. And God told me, who are you? I didn't know the answer for a long time. The day I knew, I knew that signs and wonders are byproducts. If I come, they must happen. Because these signs, he say it follows them. So the proof that you believe is that signs follow you. And it's a mark of songs. Sit down. When next somebody tells you you are finished, tell him sons of God don't finish. <laughs> when next somebody tells you you will see, tell him sons of God don't see. All the powers of heaven are on our shoulders. All the powers. Jesus said, go in this power. All powers in heaven and on earth is given to me. Go in that power. Even the herbalist knows he will be taking a risk to send an arrow towards me. It's a risk. It's a risk. Because there is a defense system from headquarters for sons. <laughs> There's a defense system. When you try to attack me, there are angels committed for my defense. Before I know, they may react. Did you not read your Bible? It says, a thousand shall fall by your side. Ten thousand by your right hand. It shall not come near you. He said, with your eyes you will see and behold the recompense of the wicked. That's 11,000 enemies falling by your side without you knowing. That means the one you are fighting is the one God allowed to build your faith. Everything you call warfare, God allowed it to build your faith. The real battle is handled because you are his son. A thousand falls by your side. Ten thousand by your right hand. If the devil throws any arrow at you, tell him, fire your best shot. If it can kill me, God won't allow it. He allowed this one so that I can build my faith. And in the name of Jesus, I rise above it. And before you know what's happening, you become bigger. Because you don't become bigger just because you come to church. You become bigger like David because the lion came, you tore it apart. The bear came, you tore it apart. 
So when you meet Goliath, him too will go down. Meanwhile, that's also a function of identity. Because when Goliath came, Goliath came with size. And unfortunately, he was bigger than all of them. The biggest man in Israel was King Saul. The Bible said he was head and shoulder above every man in Israel. Goliath came and Saul became a short man. So the moment Saul ran, all the armies of Israel ran. But a young boy showed up and said, this thing is not about height in the flesh. It's about identity in the spirit. And when he showed up, he didn't say, who is this big giant? No. He said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? You know what he's saying? I am circumcised. I am of the covenant. I am the son of God. And the Bible said, when Goliath approached David, he said, David charged at him. Are you crazy? You are, you are treading me. Who charges at a giant? Meanwhile, before David charged, he said, hear me today, not tomorrow, not next tomorrow, not next week. Today, I will cut off your head and the birds of the air will feed on you. The guy had no sword. So it's not about the sword. You can kill the enemy with his weapon. Tell somebody, you can kill the enemy with his weapon. But you must know who you are. Today, I will cut off your head. And like joke, Goliath laughed. And the Bible said Goliath cursed David with his God. You know what? That means Goliath too did not stand on his stature. He stood on the identity his God gave him. He cursed David with his God. And he became a battle of God. <laughs> and who can stand before the Lord? Who can battle with the Lord? Who can battle with the Lord? And so when David threw that stone, it was no longer a stone. The Lord blew on it. his rod the thing was not about the rod the psalmist came later to the prophetic anointing and told us with a blast of his nose he parted the red sea so when david threw the stone god stretched his finger it was the finger of god that struck Goliath, and he fell down and david rushed collected his sword cut his head all the army fled your enemies will flee from you from tonight Son Jesus correctly, they thought he was the son of a carpenter, they didn't know he was the son of the highest. Everybody that gave you an identity, they are about to be surprised because the powers of ordination will begin to speak. Sit down for a moment. Hear me, sir. Don't let anything give you another identity, don't let sin give you identity. Don't join the fornicators, you are not one. You are not one. Don't join the harlots. You are not one. If you let anything give you an identity, you are submitted to the devil. Don't let it. Don't let backbiters. Don't let wicked men bring you into their camp. The Bible says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor is seated in the seat of the scornful. He said, His delight is in the law of the Lord. He said, On this law, he meditates day and night. If you know you are the son of God, you won't join sons of Belial. If you know you are the son of God, you won't join sons of wickedness. If you know you are the sons of, son of God, you won't join sons of liars. If there's anything that's not of God, bro, is, bro, it be brought before thee, you step back. You say, we don't do this. One of my senior friends traveled to Japan, went to buy some stuff, and he forgot the bag of money in the car. He almost fainted. He tried calling the taxi guy, tried reaching out, hours, no response. Because the taxi guy was busy. 
Later in the day, the taxi guy called him and said, you left your bag. I've taken it to the station where we park. Go tomorrow and pick it. The man was shocked. Do you see what is inside? He said, yes, I saw the money. It's there. He didn't believe his eyes. Early the next day, he went and they gave him his bag. Every cobble intact when he identified the product and legally brought it into the country. When he reached back, the taxi man, why didn't you take the money? The man said, it is beneath us to steal. We are Japanese, we don't steal. We are bigger than stealing. That's identity. You will never catch me in a hotel. It's beneath me. You will never hear that I extorted money from anybody. It's beneath me. It's not pride, it's identity. Sons of God don't steal. Sons of God don't fornicate. Sons of God don't lie. It's beneath me. Ben he was telling a story a few days ago, having a conference currently in the US with Apostle John C. Suleiman, and he was telling the story. I stumbled on a clue. And he said, in the 90s, when he was at the zenith of his ministry, they invited him to the US Senate chamber. And when he showed up, prayed for them and wanted to leave, two senators in particular spoke with him. One called him and said, please sir, don't come here. We love you. We honor you. All of us watch you. He said, don't condescend to this dirty politics. He said, many men of God come here and lie. Don't be part of them. Another one called him and said, we are surprised that when you came, you only prayed. You didn't ask for money. There are certain things that will become beneath you if you know your identity. The reason most of us struggle with things is because we don't know who we are. We don't know. The day identity is born, it's not only power. It will also bring you to the realm of existence that you deserve to be in. To bring you there. And you don't need anybody to supervise you. You are your best when you are alone. That's identity. Power of ordination. And that's not all, but I don't have time. I would have shown you the second identity we have as witnesses. That means we are the ones who showcase God. God is not only known by reading the Bible. In fact, God is known when they see us. Because we are supposed to manifest God in his power and in his manifold wisdom. Ephesians 3.10 He said not only to men, even to angels. He said by the church, the manifold wisdom of God will be revealed to principalities and powers. These beings have known God for aeons. But there is still a dimension of God that is locked on our inside. That angels will see to know God. Why do you think no angel calls God any name? All of them call him holy. That means you are in your own class but when we came we say you are light we say we are, you are love we say you are kind we say you are merciful we have the capacity to reveal god in dimensions that even angels can't reveal that's why jesus told us in acts 1 8 not many days from now you shall receive power and you shall become witnesses if people are trying to know god where you are it means you don't know who you are because the day you know who you are they will see god when they see you in 1 Corinthians 11, 1, Paul said, Be ye followers of me, as I am the follower of Christ. So when you see me, you are seeing God. John was speaking in 1 John 4, 17. He said, As he is, so are we, not in heaven, in this world. So when we come, anything you are expecting from God, we reveal it to you. Not because we, we, we desire it. It's a power given to us. That's our identity. How can you come to Calabar and Calabar now swallow you up? No, now that's an error. You show up, they tell you, no ministry in this city has been big. Tell them the first one has come. Nobody has ever built a 10,000 or 15,000 seat auditorium. That's why we came. We came to break the limitation. They tell you, nobody, ah, forget it, oh, no ministry survives here for 15 years. That's why you came. You came to break the limitation. Everywhere Satan rule, you come as a witness. And as a witness, you manifest as light and you manifest as dominion. He said, the light shineth in the darkness. The darkness comprehended it not. What is the light? When Jesus was in the world, he said, I'm the light of the world. When he left the world, he said, you are the light of the world. So when we come, God comes. Identity. Dominion. Hear me, sir. Don't be limited by the limitations of the land. You were sent here for a purpose. You were sent here. You didn't choose here. You were sent. That's why nobody consorted with you. You were sent. 
in my family hey, you hear four stories nobody can extend the ministry unless it's a five generation preacher what do you mean five generation do you know how many generations are in my background god the father is in my generation god the son is in my generation god the holy ghost is my generation what do you mean by generation the endless genealogy himself dwells here i don't need my certificate but they said going to school is a limitation i i made sure i did my phd so that any other person who wants to be an academician will clear the road for him we fight the battle so that the next generation won't struggle that's why we are here that's why we are here we are witnesses when they tell you it is hard tell them wait i'm coming i know a god that knows how to deal with difficult situation i carry him because this is our hope he said christ in you is the hope of glory when you show up you defy status quo I see people who will start doing certain things at lightning speed they tell you ah the last person that did it it took him 20 years tell him give me six months give me six months i come to show you new realms of god new realms that's the goal of witnesses to show you dimensions that were not to show you jesus laid hands on the sick peter laid shadow paul laid handkerchief that's witnesses witnessing evolving glory excelling glory supernatural dimension from one propensity to another that's who you are you didn't come now by mistake the reason you came now is so that you can manifest a dimension that has never been seen we come according to degrees of intensity and you are not just a witness you're also an ambassador in first corinthians 5 verse 20 he said we are ambassadors of heaven we are pilgrims on the earth you know who an ambassador is an ambassador is one who has the legal authority to represent the country so we are not just representing god we are representing heaven you know and you know the benefits of an ambassador diplomatic cover you can't arrest an ambassador if you arrest an ambassador you have arrested the country it is a violation of bilateral law that's why it's an error for you to be demonized i'm an ambassador no demon can cage me even when i'm sleeping they are afraid i have diplomatic cover that's why it's an error for you to lack ambassadors don't don't buy their food the country provide their food i don't bear to eat i'm an ambassador there's diplomatic cover if god needs to send somebody from congo for me to have food he will send it he said you shall suck the breast of kings he said the riches of the gentiles shall be transferred to you it's not everything that is by labor work hard i do but know that beyond your hard work there's a covering i'm an ambassador sir i represent the kingdom and trust me my kingdom do well there's a cover for my health there's a cover for my protection there's a cover for all i need when we started ministry some of the budgets we were seeing were scaling at astronom astronomical levels and i was wondering how are we going to cover this and the question was were you planning to before <laughs> only auditorium is everything was in millions and the little money i saved god said give it out as seed so if i give it out as seed what's the plan for the work the plan for the work was perfected before you were born it was perfected before you were born so anything we need now i go and see it in the place of prayer i come back and declare it and god does it because i'm an ambassador i have cover i have cover i have cover tell somebody i have cover i am not alone when demons come call headquarters when you say jesus angels show up we are here that's why i said are they not ministering spirits Hebrews 1 4 send for to minister for them not to them there are angels that minister to you they are those that minister for you minister for them who are heirs of salvation so anything you need speak from your office as an ambassador when we're coming to Calabar we decreed as ambassadors of heaven the entourage is coming demons better give way otherwise there will be casualties we are ambassadors and the excellency of what we carry is not even the car we drove in it's the presence the angelic entourage that came with us when i'm tired of talking i'll start speaking power and heaven will back it up 
as I'm standing now, if I begin to give commands, things will begin to happen. It's not because of the suit I'm wearing. It's because I'm an ambassador. When I talk, heaven validated. I wish some of you do a bit of study. Arrest an American and see what will happen. Arrest one. Somebody came to Nigeria the other time who had relationship with us and they were kidnapped. Before we knew what was happening, the brother reported to the embassy and the first question they asked was that when she came to Nigeria, did she identify herself with the embassy? They said yes, that was all. Go and relax. Before I knew what was happen happening, FBI called me. Before I knew what was happening, CIA called me and they put me on a group. They said, give us all the details that you know about this person and the event. Before I knew what was happening, they had networked all the intelligence forces. For one person, one American. You can deploy this level of, of force for one person. Yes. But you see, I, I know better. I didn't wait for them. I called all my leaders and intercessors. I said, we do have a headquarter. If American government is this fast, then there is a superior government. And I said, we won't stop praying until they are released. We started praying. In 30 minutes, I saw a vision. They were testifying in church on Sunday. And I called my people. I said, it's done. Sir, in three days, they came out. This lady was pregnant. And she was in her first trimester. That's the most dangerous time. She should have lost that pregnancy. Walking in the forest. But she came out untouched. The queen has been born responded before American embassy I, I told you about America so that you see the level of value they place on their citizens and the powers they can release for an ordinary citizen that's not American ambassador that is a citizen if America can do that much imagine you who is not just a citizen of heaven but the ambassador of heaven if Satan touch you here we have another visitation you don't just know who you are they tell you you are finished he said there's no enchantment against jacob there's no divination against israel if you like enchant it will not work he didn't say jacob pray about it he said there's no enchantment there's a superior law he said when they went from kingdom to kingdom god gave a commandment touch not my anointed do my prophets no harm he wasn't talking about the prophets alone he was talking about every israelite they are anointed until today an Israeli person knows who he is. The Israeli ambassador was speaking recently to the, the, the United Nations and he said, we are the eternal people. We are the eternal people. That's a man talking at United Nations. We are the eternal people. He said, we will never finish. No nation has been attacked or buffeted like Israel. But they can't finish. They have an identity. Israel was dispersed from their land for over 2,000 years. 2,000 years, Israel didn't have a country. They were scattered across the nations because they were hunting them to kill. Adolf Hitler alone killed 6 million Jews. After 2,000 years, sir, all of them came back. Their language was intact. Nobody forgot the language. Language was intact. And they returned to their fatherland and force their enemies to give way when they ask them how do you come to that nation they say exodus chapter <laughs> god told us it's our land if you like do everything you can you can't kill them and they are bold about it we are the eternal people recently the prime minister said even if america choose not to support us they say we will fight with our fingers and they say hear me we have more than our fingers you know their population 12 million yet no nation can defeat them our own country we're over 200 million but we don't have identity even the one we have in the national anthem we don't know it how can 12 million people shake the world they are sitting in between six nations there was a time 1947 48 all the six nations rose up against them they couldn't destroy them they call it the six day war they defeated all the nations surrounding them until some of them are forced now to have diplomatic ties because of identity.
and you you are here you are the son of god you are the witness of god you are the ambassador of heaven and you say oh i don't want that demon i don't want that that harbanist i don't would harbanist if they carry your name to that shrine that shrine will catch fire oh, if they cross you they will cut down Before, so that you know the covering you have it's not only God that's covering you angels are covering you the spirit of just men that left before you they are covering you hear me if people want to fight you people like Daniel can come back did you not read your Bible the Bible tells as Jesus was praying he said the fashion of his countenance was altered his real men began to glitch that and they stood by him Moses and Elijah if a nation want to resist you the scepter of Moses can come back and whatever God did that made him conquer Egypt that thing can be done again if adultery immorality wants to swallow you in Calabar Daniel can show up and the excellent spirit can cover you again the God spirit of trust men made perfect that's where we are standing we are not alone look at this dimension is about to be born because they thought you are helpless but inside you is the spirit of the lion and the lioness when you roar your enemy will paralyze now wherever you are standing male female everyone that is being brought into the ordination of the warriors the lions clan the lioness clan i call you forth by the spirit as a fellow warrior i come and i shout at you Pakato, Erikata, let that dimension open to you. Shabak! Okay, 
Everyone here with the ordination of the lion. Ushers, help me, ushers, help me. I want to lay hands on them now. intimidate you. Don't let any spirit enslave you. You are common. You are someone. Oh my God. Oh my God. I'm seeing the, the, the oil of the prophetic. The wine of the prophet. Some of you are about to be drunk with wine. The wine of the prophet. Hey. 